Hey everybody, Sully Man back again with another Pixel Mosh Pit tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how to work with opacity masks. Uh, they're pretty simple, straightforward, but can uh, be really valuable when working and adding, you know, distress and stuff like that, and, and be editing objects non-destructively. So the way I'm going to go about it, I'm just going to first kind of introduce you to them, show you how to apply them, what they're all about, and then move into some cool little techniques that you can use to really kind of amp up your artwork. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So whatever I, I've already created just a you know rectangle, a red rectangle object that's sitting on my art canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and select that object. I have my transparency panel open. Um, that's where you're going to apply your mask. You'll see this little button over here. It says make mask. So you'll notice that when I selected the object, there's a uh, thumbnail off to the left that has that red object. That just shows you that that's the specific object you're working with currently. Um, and then off to the right, you're going to see this little no symbol, meaning that there's no mask applied to it. So let's go ahead and hit make mask, apply a mask to it. And you'll see that there's a blue border around this thumbnail. That means right now we're in the art canvas, uh, the artboard canvas, I mean. Um, let's go ahead and activate the opacity mask. So now we're in the opacity mask, and you'll know that by the blue border around its thumbnail. Um, you'll notice also that it's completely black. And the way that works within a mask, if it's completely black, 100% black, the opacity is going to be 0%. Whereas something 100% white is going to be 100% visible, or the opacity is going to be 100%. You'll see there's this opacity dialog right here. That has nothing to do with the mask. That's the actual artworks, the object itself, its overall opacity. We're not dealing with that right now. That has nothing to do with this mask. You'll see that sectioned off by this horizontal line right here. Uh, this is the mask section. So uh, right now, it, the mask is 100% black, making it 100, uh, uh, the opacity 0%, meaning you can't see it. So I'm going to grab a star, and I'm going to go ahead and draw it in to the opacity mask. And you'll see it's in there because you can see it in the thumbnail. It's red. Now, red isn't 100% white. It's probably got, um, if you were to, to take that red and make it grayscale, it would probably be somewhere between 70 and 90% white. So it's going to have an appearance in the opacity mask of 70 to 90% opacity. So I'm going to show you that by turning off the visibility of the background. And I do that by Control Shift D. So you'll see that the transparency designated by the checkerboard in the background. You can see that through some of that red. So now the other cool thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object and move it around and you'll notice I'm not getting the full star because I'm going outside the border of that specific object. Remember our object is this red rectangle so where I, wherever I move it around um, once I reach the limit of the piece of object, or the piece of object, but the actual object that I've selected and applied a mask to, there's nothing to be visible or invisible. There's nothing there. It only works within the object. So now, knowing that, I'm going to go ahead and instead of this red, I'm going to go ahead and apply 100% white to that. And you'll see now, I can't see the checkered background because I've applied 100% white, which makes the opacity 100%. It, you cannot see through it. It's 100% opaque. Opaque. So, now with that knowledge, you'll see that I can move that around, and I'm going to go ahead and release the mask, meaning I want to remove the mask from that object. And you'll see wherever I left that, all those um, objects in the opacity mask are now revealed, as well as the um, original object itself. So I'm going to delete that star, and you'll see that the object's there. I didn't delete anything from it. I didn't erase. So. In a sense, let's grab the eraser tool. If I'm to use the eraser tool and slash through this object, you'll see I have two objects now. But what if I wanted to keep the original object intact, like if it was a photo or something like that? I can't do that. This is destructive. That's the reason why we use opacity mass, to be non-destructive. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this object. I'm going to go ahead and control shift D to turn my background back on. And I'm going to head over to this tote bag here. So I had a question in the comments, and somebody was asking, hey, I, I followed your t-shirt mock-up tutorial, and I was trying to apply it to a tote bag, but I couldn't get the insides of the bag to disappear. 
So I'm going to go over and show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the background off again. And you'll see this is just a tote bag image I found on Google. And I'm going to go ahead and use an opacity mask to knock it out. And this is something you can create using that video. Watch that again to see how you set up the mock-up. I'm not going to do that today, but I'm going to show you how using an opacity mask you can knock out all these elements. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply the opacity mask. Actually, let's not do that first. Let's go ahead and trace the main object out before we do that because um, what I'm going to end up doing is when I click mask, it'll disappear. I don't want to work from that because I can't see it. Um, there's different ways you could actually apply the mask. Grab a rectangle. Whoops. When well, we apply the mask, I didn't follow my own directions. Activate the opacity mask. Throw, you can throw the red in there to show some visibility if you want, but I'm not going to go through all those steps. Um, you can get white, trace from that, and then invert. It, it's just a pain in the butt. I'm just going to release. I don't need any of that stuff. So before I apply the mask, I'm going to go ahead and trace the object out. I'm going to set a the fill to nothing, and I'm going to set uh, my stroke to let's just make it black. I'll make it real thin to like a 0.5 or 0.25, and I'm going to get started on tracing this thing out. So. Um, I'm not going to follow it exactly, um, and I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video here um, just to get the tracing done. Okay, so I have the contour of the tote bag traced out. Um, there's a couple different tactics that you can use to accomplish this. Um, I'm going to do it within the mask on this one, but you can also create all these shapes. You could literally uh, trace out these loops here and then knock them out from the main shape and what have you and then paste that into a mask. But I'm, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to show you within the mask because that is the whole point of this video. So now that I have that traced out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this. I'm going to use Control X to cut that shape. I'm going to grab the tote bag image. I'm going to apply the mask to it now. I'm going to activate the opacity mask and I'm going to Control Shift V, paste in place that object I traced. Now keep in mind it was traced with a um, appearance of a 0.25 stroke uh, that's black. I don't want that. I want it 100% visible. Uh, so I need white and I need a fill. So I'm going to switch it to a fill by using Shift X, which will toggle uh, these two here. That's a shortcut. So I get to know that one. I use that one all the time. And I'm going to apply 100% white to it. So now you're going to see that I've trimmed out the outside because within the mask, you can see I've contoured and you can see the shape. It's the tote bag, but I still have the white um, Spa the negative space between the handles of this tote bag um, are white too, so they're going to be visible. I need to knock those out. So what I'm going to do within my opacity mask, I'm going to select 100% black, and then I'm going to start tracing that out. I'm going to create its own new shape, and in the opacity mask, I can go along and start basically cutting out from the image. Now, like I said, you can you can do this the other way, where you can you can uh, pre-make your little cookie cutter shape and then paste it into the opacity mask um, with white to make it 100% visible to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video and finish up the rest of this tracing. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, background off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click out of the opacity mask. Now I have my object and I can move it around. You can see I can move it around. And right now the opacity mask is going to follow wherever I move it because I have them linked. You can unlink them. Be careful. If you do run into that issue, you could, let's say, grab the object. The opacity mask isn't going to follow. You can kind of see it in the background where I made it visible. We don't want to do that. Make sure you have it linked, but in some cases you do. You might want to move the opacity mask, um, you know, if it's like a pattern that you're using or something like that. 
uh, you can unlink that. So keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, that's, that's taking an image and cropping it out and say you want to make a mock-up out of this, follow that previous video, and this is how you make the uh, opacity mask work for you in that tutorial. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another cool thing about opacity mask. So here's, here's uh, some text and a little image I'm putting together. And let's say um, we want to, like on some of these Jordan sneakers, they use like an elephant skin pattern. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit this um, image a little bit to suit my needs uh, for the opacity mask, which is, um, you know, the grayscale values. I can paste this in as is, and I'll show you how that works, uh, but it's not going to work for, the, for what I want to do. So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm just going to move it out of the way. Let's grab this object, head to our transparency panel. You'll see that it's activated because we have a thumbnail of it. Let's hit make mask activate our opacity mask and then I'm going to paste that within and you can see automatically you have a pretty cool effect already going on. Now that's awesome and all but that's not the effect I'm looking for but I just wanted to show you that you can just paste images in and create a texture. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the background off so you can see what's going on. You can see that it's not not uh, necessarily exactly what I want. Even this gray stuff is pretty uh, uh, it's it's not as opaque as I want it to be, um, so I'm going to show you kind of how to get that Jordan look too. So I'm going to turn the background back on. I'm going to go ahead and release the opacity mask, delete this object, and I still have my original. So now what I'm going to do it's it's going to be a two layer process. I want this gray to stay. I don't even want to mess with that. I'm going to hit copy, and then I'm going to hit Control F to paste in front. So I have two objects, and I'm going to make this one black. Now this one, I'm going to apply some effects to it using opacity mask. So I'm going to alt, click, and drag this because I want to keep one just in case I mess up. I always like to work non-destructively. So with this image selected, I'm going to go to Edit, Edit Colors, and I'm going to convert to grayscale. So that's pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to go to Effect. I'm going to go ahead over to Effects Gallery. And you can see that I've already worked with it before, but I had not any of this stuff. I head over to the sketch section, I go to stamp, uh, and then I mess with the settings. Um, I want to have white showing quite a bit. Um, I'm going to end up inverting this, but I kept it pretty low because I want as much detail as I can get. And the smoothness, I don't want it super smooth. I want some of that texture. We're kind of trying to go for that Jordan look. Um, but I also want it a little smooth, so I'm going to go with that. Yeah, right there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. So once I'm done, now I have something that I, when I paste into my opacity mask, you can see I have full black and full white, nothing in between. So it's going to work pretty well. And now that I have that, I don't want the, the white sections that are here are going to be what's visible. I want the cracks to be visible. So I don't want the cracks to be black. I want the cracks to be white. I'm going to head back to Edit edit colors, whoops, select the object first, edit, edit colors, and then invert colors. So now they're inverted and I have the sections that I want visible, visible. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that, select the black, you, you'll know that you have it selected by looking at the thumbnail, make mask to apply the opacity mask, activate the opacity mask, now we can see the blue border, and then I'm going to paste in, and you'll see automatically I'm starting to get that look kind of how the Jordan sneakers look. So I can stretch that out, do all kinds of stuff, you know, size it the way I want. Maybe that's a little too big. I can move that around here, maybe alt, click and drag, and I can duplicate. Now you can see I have two of the same shape. Flip it around, kind of get the pattern looking seamless. You'll see that I'm, I'm keeping the pattern, the, the actual image ends between the I and the end, so you won't be able to tell the difference. And you can see how quick I've already created that uh, nice look. Yeah, you can image trace and all that stuff, but again, we're talking opacity mask today. Um, and that's that's one technique, and that was using an image online. I did some edits to the image to get it ready for the mask, pasted it into the mask, moved it around to look good, and now I'm done. So then I can also do with this um, lettering right here, let's go ahead and copy this and then paste in front with a control F and let's make it red. I'm going to do the same thing here but I'm going to use just a pattern in Illustrator. So let's go ahead and 
make a mask. We've applied the opacity mask. Let's go ahead and activate and work within it by selecting its thumbnail. Uh, and now you, there, there's a lot of default libraries uh, for swatches. Just head over to patterns, you know, nature, decorative, basic graphics, whatever you want. I, I picked Fonster patterns. I have it open here. So there's a whole bunch of patterns here that you can apply as swatches. And I'm going to go ahead and hit a rectangle, surround the object that I'm working with. And right now I have the red fill set to it, but let's go ahead and apply the pattern. And you can see that that object, remember it was the red opacity tests, text with the black uh, text behind it. So right now we're just working within the red. You can see it in the thumbnail. I have the pattern applied. That pattern has all these crazy colors. All those colors have their own value to them. So you can see that you could create your own patterns using grayscale values and, and do some pretty interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and just apply some random, some different patterns to it. So that's pretty cool. I like that. We'll leave that right there. Drop out of the opacity mask. Uh, let's go ahead. Now that we're out of the opacity mask for that, uh, I can select the object and move it around. And you can see that it's applied. And you can see the visibility there. You know, that, that looks good in it itself. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's pretty much opacity mess. I hope you guys uh, took a lot from this today. Check out the other tutorials. I just uh, released the Plastisol Transfer tutorial. Um, I might as well show that real fast. Let's go ahead and click this object here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Copy, Make Mask. I'm going to paste in place that same black. But this time I'm going to head to my white. Grab my Simple Spray Airbrush. And keep in mind in that previous video that I uploaded, uh, you guys can get a hold of these plastisols in the Pixel Mosh Pit store. Uh, they're they're you know ready for purchase, and you can do this stuff with it. So you know I can apply, um, you know, nice distress kind of stuff. Let's grab some more plastisol cracks. Slap these in here. Whoops! I need my symbol sprayer, and you can see. You know, I can manually create these instead of having to depend, depend on images. And I can shift them around, grab my stainer, knock them out, set it whatever value I want, uh, and be done with it. But I have that in a previous video, so go ahead and check that out too. Uh, but yeah, that's Opacity Mask. Uh, like I said, I hope you guys took something from this today. Uh, this is how you work with Opacity Mask. It'll help you within, you know, creating mock-ups or distressing text or anything your imagination can kind of come up with, uh, you know. So, uh, again, I want to thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It, it uh, you know, definitely goes a long way. And any visit to the uh, Pixel Mosh Pit store is, is truly appreciated. Thank you guys for your time, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to zoom in. Right now these are gray. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the